So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to review the operation of an adder circuit, which can not only add two four-bit numbers, but which can also perform subtraction. Uh, so this circuit is being simulated in Logisim. It's a four-bit parallel adder subtractor. Uh, it's discussed in the lecture note uh, on uh, adder subtractor circuits. Uh, and all I'm going to do is demonstrate the operation of the circuit uh, and I'm going to show you first of all it doing addition and then I'm going to show you it doing subtraction. Uh, and what we'll do is for each of the uh, operations, the addition and the subtraction, what we'll do is we'll do the sum as though it were a pen and paper uh, uh, operation. So we'll do addition first uh, and then we'll do the subtraction second. When we look at this circuit, we can see that it's very similar to the circuits that we looked at in the first half of uh, the lecture note. And you can see that the circuit consists of four one-bit full adders, and that each uh, full adder takes care of the addition of one column of a uh, sum that involves the words A and B. So we can see, just for the sake of uh, uh, clarity, for completeness, that uh, the first digit of A is added to the first digit of B by the first full adder, second digit of A and the second digit of B are added by the second full adder, the third digit of A, the third digit of uh, B are added by the uh, third full adder, and the fourth digit of uh, B is added to the fourth digit of A by the fourth full adder. As before, and just as we would expect, the carry out of the first full adder becomes the carry in of the second full adder, the carry out of the second full adder becomes the carry in of the third full adder, the uh, carry out of the third full adder becomes the carry in of the fourth full adder. So the key difference between this circuit and the uh, circuits that we looked at previously is that we've got four exclusive OR gates uh, and they're connected to an input pin which is no, uh, called mode control. So the basic idea is that if the mode control pin is set to zero, the circuit will do an addition. And if it's set to one, it will do a subtraction. So what we're going to do first of all is an addition. That's the easiest option. And for the moment, we'll just ignore, ignore the exclusive OR gates uh, and the mode control uh, because they're effectively switched off at this point. Uh, and what we'll do is just consider a, uh, an addition from a pen and paper point of view uh, and then we'll demonstrate it in the circuit. So if we were to add uh, decimal 7 plus 2, then obviously the sum of those two numbers would be 9. And if we were to represent 7 and 2 as 4-bit numbers, then we would have something like this, 0, 1, 1 uh, plus 0, 0, 1, 0. So remember, we always write the numbers out in full Right? So if we were looking at an 8-bit adder, then we'd have to have 8 digits, even though uh, uh, the zeros on the left-hand side of the number would not be significant. We still write the number out in full. Uh, so if we add that, uh, uh, those two numbers, which we'll write down as A and B, uh, and we add them together, uh, just using the basic uh, binary addition facts, we'll end up with 1 and 0 gives us 1, 1 and 1, uh, gives us 0 with a carry of 1 to the next column. 1 and 1 and 0 gives us 0 with a carry of 1 to the next column. And then finally, 1 and 0 and 0 gives us 1. And now there is a carry on to the next column. We'll write it in for the sake of completeness, uh, but it doesn't get added to anything uh, on the actual circuit itself. It just gets uh, output on the final carry out pin. So if we were to write this uh, as it would be in the circuit, then the answer, uh, the output, uh, would be 01001. Okay, so that would be our output on the circuit. So I think we've seen that behavior before. And if I go now to the circuit and set it into simulation mode, and I set A to 11 or 011, which is 7, uh, and then I set B to 0010, and we observe the outputs on the pins you can see that the sum outputs, which are the outputs of each of the four full adders, that is 1001, and the carry out output is 0. So uh, just as we would expect, the circuit carries out the addition, 
1001 is the binary representation of decimal 9. So we can see that the circuit works as a 4-bit uh, uh, parallel adder. Uh, there's no problem with this circuit in terms of its uh, extending it. If I wanted to make it an 8-bit circuit or a 16-bit circuit, uh, it would require a little bit of uh, additional wiring, but it would behave exactly in the same way as the circuit that we are looking at just now. The only difference is we'll be able to add bigger binary numbers. A and B might be 8 bits each or 16 bits or 32 bits or whatever it was that we wanted. So we've taken care of looking at the behaviour of the circuit as an adder circuit. What we'll do next is we'll look at it as a subtractor circuit. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll look at the circuit in uh, uh, subtraction mode. So what I'm going to do is start off the demonstration with a decimal uh, subtraction. Okay, so I'm going to take the same two uh, numbers that we had before, which is 7 and 2, but instead of uh, uh, adding them, I'm going to subtract them. So obviously 2 away from 7 gives us 5, uh, and if we think about that in terms of its binary representation, uh, the difference will look something like this. So we write out uh, the binary representation for uh, 7, and then we do the same thing for 2, and that's what it looks like there. And then we'll do our conventional subtraction. So what I'm going to do just now is just do the subtraction using the binary subtraction facts. Now this is not the way that the circuit does it, uh, and it's not the way that you would be expected to do it in an exam uh, situation. Uh, I'm just demonstrating it like this, just to show you that the rules of arithmetic are universal so long as you know what the addition facts are for the radix of the numbering system that you're using. So I can recall to mind, uh, and it's not hard to do so, that uh, for uh, 0 away from 1 in binary, the difference is 1. 1 away from 1 gives you 0, uh, and 0 away from 1 gives you 1, and then finally 0 away from 0 gives you 0. So we can see quite clearly that that is uh, uh, 4 and 1, that's the binary representation of 5. But as you know from your studies in mathematics, and also as you know from uh, my lecture note, there's another way that you could go about doing this as a pen and paper exercise, and it is uh, to take our subtraction and to repose it as an addition. So in order to do that, we need to kind of get an extra bit of paper uh, and write out the uh, difference again. Uh, so this is the sum 0, 1, 1, which represents our 7, minus 0, 0, 1, 1, like so. Uh, sorry, it's not 0, 1. I made that mistake the last time. Let's get this right. Uh, it is 0, 0, 1, 0. So we write it out like that, and we already know what the answer is. It's 0, 1, 0, 1. But there's a different approach, which is to take our two words, a and B, and to use something called complement arithmetic uh, to transform the B input, the B word, the 0010, the 2 uh, input, uh, into its radix minus 1's complement, and then its full radix complement. So to do that uh, as a pen and paper exercise, we take the B word, over to the other side of the paper, we write it out like that, and then to get the radix uh, minus 1's complement, the 1's complement as it's sometimes called, we look at each digit in turn and we flip its bits, in other words, we invert it or uh, 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 negate it. So 0 becomes 1, 1 becomes 0, the 0 becomes 1, and the next 0 becomes 1. So that is uh, uh, the radix minus 1 complement of B. Okay, uh, and then we will generate the full radix complement by adding 1 to that, and that will give us uh, the full radix complement, which is also known as the 2's complement. So 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1 into the next column, 0 plus 1 is uh, uh, 1. 1 plus 0, now these zeros are not there, but we'll just do it as though they were. 1 plus 0 is 1, 
and 1 plus 0 is 1. So that is the full radix complement of B. Okay, so that's great. Uh, now we have to go back to our original uh, uh, sum, uh, which was uh, 0, 1, 1, 1. That's our A word. And what we're going to do is we're going to repose it as an addition. So we're going to take the radix complement, the twos complement of B, and we're going to write it down underneath the A word, the A input, like so. And instead of subtracting it, we're going to add the two together and discard the fifth digit. And when we do that, what we'll see is that the uh, sum that results out of A and the twos complement of B will actually be uh, the difference between A and B. So we have 1 plus 0 uh, gives us 1. Uh, 1 plus 1 uh, gives us 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1, carry the 1. And then we have 1 plus 0 plus 1, uh, uh, which gives us 0, and carry the 1 onto the next column. So the 1 in the next column doesn't get added, uh, but just gets recorded uh, directly down into the uh, fifth column. Uh, but because of the use of the radix uh, or the radix complement technique, this guy, this fifth digit, is discarded. Okay. So what we're left with, the four digits that are on the outputs of the four full adders, uh, that is the difference. And if we go back up here uh, to our original uh, subtraction that we did in the traditional way, you can see that that is the same thing uh, as this. We've uh, got the binary string 0, 1, 0, 1. So that is equal to 5, and that is the right output. OK, so that's the uh, pen and paper uh, operation that we're going to now do in the actual circuit itself. So we go back to Logisim, uh, and I'm going to reset the simulation so all of the inputs are set to uh, 0. And I'm going to set the A word uh, to 7. That's 0, 1, 1, 1. Uh, and I'm going to set the B word to 2. Now you can see that when we look at the outputs of the circuit, the output of the circuit is 1, 0, 0, 1. And that's 9. So that's the, uh, uh, the sum of A and B, 7 and 2. Now the reason why the circuit is doing that is, of course, because the mode control at the moment is set to 0. But if I switch on the mode control by asserting a 1 into the mode control, you can see that that 1 travels through the mode control line and enters as an input to each of the exclusive OR gates, as well as entering into the first full adder as a carry-in. So let's just talk about what the four exclusive OR gates do. Note that each of the exclusive OR gates is wired up to uh, uh, the B word. Okay, so the first bit of the B word goes into this exclusive OR gate, the second goes into this exclusive OR gate, and the third goes into this exclusive OR gate, and the fourth goes into this bottom exclusive OR gate. Now, the behavior of the exclusive OR gate uh, from memory is that it will go high if an odd number of its inputs are high. So you can see. Uh, that the effective behaviour of the exclusive OR gates when the mode control line is active is to basically flip the bits of the B word. So if you look at the B word, you can see that it goes 0, 0, 1, 0. And if you look at the first bit that is travelling into the first exclusive OR gate, it's a 0. But when it comes out of the exclusive OR gate and then travels into the full adder, it has been inverted or negated and it is now a 1. If you look at the second bit of the uh, uh, B word and you look at its value before it goes through the exclusive OR gate, it's 1. But then when it has travelled through the exclusive OR gate, it is now 0. Likewise, the third bit of B is a 0 going into the exclusive OR gate. But when it comes out, it has been negated and inverted and it goes into the third full adder as a 1. And then finally, uh, when we look at the uh, fourth full adder, the input to that is 0, 
but when it comes out of the exclusive OR gate, it has uh, been inverted and it is a 1. So the four exclusive OR gates are basically carrying out this function here. So I'm going to highlight that with orange, which is that they are doing the flipping of the bits to generate the ex, uh, the radix minus one's complement. The other thing that's notable about the mode control line is that it connects into the carry in. So that means that the first full adder is not only adding the first digit of A and B together, keeping in mind that B has been flipped, but it's also adding one to it. Now that's effectively the same thing as what has been done here, but it's just been done out of sequence. So in our pen and paper exercise, what we did was we flipped the bits to get the radix minus one's complement, and then we added one. But we could just as easily have done it like this. We could have flipped the bits, brought the radix minus one's complement over here, and then added the one uh, uh, at this point. So in fact, I may actually just do that just to make it absolutely clear. So here is our, our original uh, sum. So we could have done it like this. This is the A word. So that's 0, 1, 1. And what I'm going to do is write underneath it the radix uh, minus 1's complement, which is 1, uh, 1, 0, 1. And I'm going to add them together. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is uh, 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1, carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. Now when we look at that, it doesn't look like the right answer. But of course, we still have to add in uh, the 1 to get the full complement. So we're doing this in a slightly different sequence. And when we do that, uh, we'll get 1 plus 0 will give us 1. Uh, 0 plus 0 will give us 0. Uh, uh, 1 plus 0 will give us uh, 1. Uh, 0 plus 1 We'll get 0 plus 0 will give us 0, and 1 plus 1, 0 will give us 1. But of course, the fifth digit we ignore, it gets discarded, and what we're left with is 0, 1, 0. So 0, 1, 0, 1. So going back to our circuit, that's effectively what the mode control line does when it adds in a 1 at the beginning of the addition. It's basically uh, taking care of the step that generates the full complement. So when we look at the output of the circuit, you can see that we can ignore the carry out uh, because it's not meaningful. But if we look at the sum output, we have the binary string 0, 1, 0, 1, which is 4 and 1, which gives us our correct difference, which is 5. So I would urge you to play about with this circuit. You can find the circuit on uh, Blackboard. Uh, and I'll demonstrate this again in class and I'll answer any questions. Uh, in general, whenever I ask students about this, I always make sure uh, that the A word is bigger than the B word. It's possible to use this technique uh, to uh, uh, subtract larger numbers from smaller one numbers and to get the negative difference. But that's just a little bit more complicated than what we need to learn. All I'm interested in doing with you guys is demonstrating that uh, addition can be reposed as subtraction using this type of circuit. So really the important thing is to remember that the exclusive OR gates don't do anything unless the mode control line is switched on, is uh, asserted as a 1. And then when the mode control line is switched on, the exclusive OR gates flip the bits that are coming from the B word and also they add 1 to the first column. And that's essentially the equivalent of generating the full radix of the B word. Once you have the full radix of the B word, you can basically repose your subtraction as a difference. Uh, sorry, as an addition operation, not as a difference operation. Uh, so hopefully that's been uh, helpful. I would urge you, as I said, to play about with this circuit, observe its behave behavior, and use the uh, probe tool to actually look at the values on uh, the output lines and the input lines to the various cases. Very, very uh, informative.